Hello, I'm here today talking to Arlene from Arlene and Company. She is an amazing resource when it comes to books about just about anything. And she is an RN turned homeschooler. And I am so excited for her to share some of her favorite books with us today. Thanks for talking to me, Arlene. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to do this with you. Um, as you said, uh, books is just at the heart of our homeschool and way before we even homeschooled. Um, that was my clutch always was books, books, books. So I'm excited to be here. Great. Um, I'm admiring your library shelves behind <laughs> you. Um, that's it's like awesome. pretty high. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, so what books did you bring to share today? I brought a little bit of everything. Um, one of my first loves um, is to have is resource books. Actually, the main things that I purchase, um, most of the things that I, you see me share um, on my platforms is um, books I get from the library. I wholeheartedly go there first and I love, love going to the library. But the ones that I really purchase are the ones that are resource books that are gonna be year, used for years and years to come. Um, so I have a lot of those. Then I have some independent reads. I have some graphic novels. I have a little bit of everything. So if we wanna just get to it, that's fine with me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have, I don't know about you, but DK Books, they just have my heart, you know? <laughs> so you're gonna see a few of them. Um, one of the ones that, um, this is, a fairly new re um, release is uh, Remarkable Diaries, the world's greatest diaries, journals, notebooks, and letters. So you're looking at history through, you know, um, historical documents, you know, with personal writings, uh, journals, and things like that. So I thought this was such an inter interesting take on history. Um, and you can actually see the photographs of the actual documents and the actual letters that um, were recovered or somewhere in some museum. And then they give you not only, you know, the translation that you can actually read what it says on there, because that's important, but then a little bit of a backstory about what was happening in history during that time. Um, so I really, really appreciate this book. And I have this, this is the diaries. I also have remarkable books. I didn't pull that one, but that, cause that one's really just like historical books. I mean, <laughs> how cool is that? That's amazing. But yeah. Um, this is a fantastic one. And I think it's great to like pull um, for different studies. Maybe you're looking into a, a particular individual and you can see if they're here and you can actually look at their own writing and what they wrote and like those personal touches. So I really appreciate a book like this. A um, cool introduction to primary sources. Yes, absolutely. And I actually, um, when we visited DC a couple of times, we have like, you know, obviously our, um, a replicas of a lot of the first source um, documents and, and we kind of just have those all out when we're doing different studies. So I love that. But to have it in a book, um, this one has been circulating quite for some time and I held on to it for a while before sharing about it because I really wanted to dig deep. And the author, she is absolutely magnificent. If you have ever get a chance to like um, read a little bit about her um, and um, you know how this all came to be and she's young too i can't remember she's like mid-20s so name? it's just um you know what i'm gonna butcher her name but she's miss harper muriel i want to say mm -hmm. um but this is timelines from black history leaders legends and legacies so it's like their other timeline books if you have seen them from bk as well um uh, which you have the timeline, but not all written in just like one line, is done in different interactive ways. Mm. And so a nice little pictorial um, representation of it, you're still following a timeline, but they change it up on each layout. Um, so you can learn about these historic figures in so many wonderful ways. And it just kind of keeps the kiddos engaged because, you know, they're following along because, you know, they keep seeing that same little timeline. And so after a while, it's just like, yeah, yeah. But when they see it change up, it's really pretty cool. Um, so anyways, this is um, Timelines from Black History. They have a series in, of the Timelines book. Um, so there's quite a few of them, but this is one of their latest ones um, with that. Um, yeah, let me break it up here. So this is actually a, um, historical fiction. Now I love having historical fiction, um, 
blended into it because then you can kind of compare it a little bit of like what's happening in the story and then to the true um real history of it it does send you on like little rabbit trails yeah. this series the ology series is one of my favorites <laughs> i have so many of them and i actually have the handbooks that go along with it um but is this is egyptology it's actually the first one that we gather and kind of fell in love with um and they're like um told through like a journal type of um thing of a story and obviously the story is fictional but a lot of the cool like the mythology and things like that that's in it is actually what they believed in and you know part of the history but there's all kinds of interactive little flaps and things that the kiddos can play around with and discover new information or whatever or not they have the spyology one and they have like the spy glasses and they have all kinds of stuff but um these have all kinds of things when you can play with the book it's like you know it takes you back to your pop-up days totally. i got pop-up cooks too so but anyways these are really really cool um where's my mummy i like my mummy one He's does in that one, um does that one have a scavenger hunt in it hidden i think one of them does yeah. um but they have like you have to break the code you have to, um, all kinds of different ones. I, I'm trying to remember this. I haven't read this one in a while. This was like, I don't know, maybe three years ago that we did this one. Um, but the spy one is one of my favorites. I shouldn't pull that one. But yeah, that one has a lot of interactive components to it. Um, I also like to have ones that they can independently read. I mean, history could be pretty heavy. And our whole focus is making sure that we are listening through diverse um, voices mm -hmm. and a collective voice as well, not just from one point of view. Um, same way that I um, teach history, uh, you will see that I teach it from a collection of resources, including History Unbox. Um, and it's because I want to present history from different voices um, mm -hmm. and you know give that different perspective yeah. and not just looking at like you know so linear. But so one of the things, you know, when their kiddos are reading, um, you know, or listening to the read alouds or whatever or not, it's nice to pair with something that they can read themselves. So um, Show Me History Ooh. are comic books, they're graphic novels. Um, and you can still see here, I think I found it, was it, I think it was Sam's Club <laughs> first or something like that. It's like, what is this? And then since then I, I've, I've discovered them. But anyways, this is, pretty rad. I mean, it goes through um, like a oh, different twist to a picture book biography, but it is jam packed with their story, obviously in the character's voice. And um, it's a graphic novel. I mean, come on now. <laughs> really fun. So, but it's really hard to find graphic novels that, you know, it's not like, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, through a, a rosy lens or things like that. So it's, it's nicely balanced. So nice. I have a few of these, you know, Susan B. Anthony, Amelia Earhart, Abraham Lincoln, Hamilton, of course, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, you know, Martin Luther King, every single time they come out with a new one, we do that. Then there was this series, this is actually from DK. When I saw this, um, they had sent this to me for review. Um, I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is all course um, talk. <laughs> now I know some, some parents will be like, are you, what? <laughs> <laughs> but hear me out, hear me out. Some of your kiddos will absolutely love this. Just like they're obsessed with like brains or you know some things that we find absolutely gross. They would think this is absolutely so cool. Um, so think about like a zombie telling you their own history. <laughs> um, so basically this one is Course Talk Groundbreaking Women and um, the host of a TV show basically um, interviews the corpse, <laughs> digs them up, sits them up um, <laughs> somewhere and then they tell their whole story like they're on a TV show and they go through their whole history. Oh my gosh, my kid would love this because she loves history and creepy things. Yeah, so they, this That's one has like different, um, obviously, uh, women figure throughout history. Uh, like how did Elizabeth the first smash the Spanish uh, Armada? How did Anne Frank's diary help her deal with despair? And everything is told like if they're going through an interview and obviously they add some humor to it. Um, and I mean, it's quite a bit. So it's... Um, 
I have this one too, groundbreaking scientists. So, um, but there is a whole series of these and new ones coming out. I got a little bit of a preview of the new ones coming out. I was just a little bit beyond excited. <laughs> Those are super fun. I really like things that make history not so dry for kids, you know, and I think like the ick factor is one of those things that draws kids in and that's totally okay. I did the same thing with, uh, we're um, on our human anatomy block and um, there was these fun books that it just talks about it. Like, you know, it's gross and we're going to talk about it yeah. and the way it's presented, how, you know, how it's funny and stuff like that. It, it turns something that could be pretty dry and a lot of over a lot of kiddos heads. Anatomy is not an easy subject, yeah. um, but if it's gross, they're interested. <laughs> it's so true. Um, one of my favorite publishers for um, picture by um, book biographies is Sleeping Bear Press. I just absolutely adore the way they do picture book biographies. So um, the writers that they um, curate, it's just fabulous. Um, I pulled, they have the alphabet series. Now the alphabet series, you can do like geography, you can do um, specific history on something. Um, but this one for, um, for example, is T is for time. And then it goes, um, so if you're talking about, you know, American Revolution or whatever, not you can pick on any topic and it'll have a picture book on there or, or a person. I think I have, I have a few like on presidents and stuff, but it has an informational text on the side and then on the picture is written in verse. So you can read this part for um, like, you know, younger kiddos that maybe this will be over their heads. But this part, the poetry, like, you know, it reads in like, like a rhyme, they'll get something out of it and learn a little bit um, with the rhyme. And then this gives you more information for your older kiddos if you're doing this as a read aloud. So, and the awesome thing about um, Sleeping Bear Press is that if you go onto their website, uh, probably like 99% of their books has a free teacher guide. Ooh. So you can expand on it if you want to like take one book and treat it as a spine and do a little mini study, you can do that. So um, here's some, I mean, these are not all history, but S is for Smithsonian, W is for waves. I don't know if you can see that, but yes. it's, they don't only do the alphabet series. They do a lot of picture book biography and just love the way they do that, um, do them. For multi-age families yeah so yeah because like families have the way it's, it's kind of like two books in one you know yeah. you have the verse and then you have like the informational text and I have learned quite a bit from some of this I mean I grew up in New York City and I got the N is for no E is for Empire State I believe this was and um there was some stuff I didn't know about my state <laughs> I was like oh okay um one of the other um, series that I absolutely gush about and have for a while is a child introduction series. And I don't know if you've heard of them. There's like a child introduction to the night sky. There's a child introduction to poetry, a child introduction to orchestra, you know, all these things. So this one is a child introduction to natural history, um, a story of our living earth, amazing animals, plants, and fascinating fossils and gems. Um, so the way these are written, they perfectly serve as a spine. Mm. Like you can, you know, especially if you have little ones and you just think, you know, curricula is a little bit too heavy. And they usually have some kind of activity that comes in the flap um, to do something with it. I'm not, I don't even know what this one is because we haven't messed with that one. <laughs> uh, but one of them has like an inflatable globe and, you know, there's like the geography one. But um, it tells it like this, you know, a narrative, but with the informational text throughout and it's written directly. So, um, you know, aiming to the, ch to a child, you know, so it's not beyond too complex. It just makes it a little bit bite-sized. So I do appreciate these. Um, and it's like, you know, is a visual guide, but with enough text throughout it. Um, I can keep going. <laughs> Please do. I am having so much fun. Um, I'm going to be replaying this so I can write everything down and uh, hit up the bookstore. Pretty much. I mean, and I was conservative with what I pulled. I'm like, I don't know. Should I stop? I don't. I, mean, I just like. I could talk about books all day. So. I was like, I, I probably empty out. Like, I, I should have positioned myself in my history <laughs> section. I actually have my um, bookcase divided by categories and subcategories. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I should have just like plopped myself right 
next to the two rows. <laughs> that probably would have been better. Um, Usborne, create some fun um, books, um, you know, that are great for like an introduction, mm -hmm. I would say, or exposure. And then they have like the older series. One of the first, first books that we used um, when we started homeschooling was um, The Time Traveler. So the um, the fun part about this, and this only you know deals with uh, like four points, is that you know there's this kid, he has this magic helmet that's gonna transport him um, back in time. So he starts, you know, here's your destination, then you go, um, and then it tells you about the, each person and what their job is. So they start at like medieval history, and then they go back in time from there. So each time that he like zips on by or however he transports, he goes further back into history. So you end up in um, ancient history. But my kiddos absolutely love this because think about Sims. <laughs> this is what it reminds, um, reminds me of. Yeah. And everybody has like, because each of the little characters, you know, you meet them first and everybody's doing a different job and everything is labeled. Um, and then you can read the story of what's happening, but then you can read what's going on in the village with each in the, um, individual little picture at the same time. So I think it, that makes it so unique. You see like in the building, to me, it's just like Sims come to real life history. Um, and this is just fun, but it, it's meant to be like an introduction and obviously not going to go too high into um, in depth or anything like that. But like, for example, a trip into uh, in the town. So it de deals with things that are not just like wars and stuff like that. But, you know, daily living, daily lives, you know, here's life at the castle. Then here's life at that. So I think this was super fun. But um, story of the Vikings. Oh. First, you meet each part and then you go from there. And then at the end of each um, section, there's going to be a little quiz. So you can gather what they learned about it um, as well. Oh. But yeah fun and I, I uh, life connections because it's so relatable exactly exactly and that's what I like presenting um history that it's not just straight facts you know remember when we were in school and it's just like these dates and facts now I was always a history buff I absolutely always love history you can make it sound as boring as possible I was still in the front seat and I'm like tell me more <laughs> like what else um, you know, other people were falling asleep, but not me. <laughs> um, so it didn't matter how it was presented to me, but I do know that if I would just say some dry facts and dates to my kiddos, they'd be like, see you later, <laughs> you know, completely would have been checked out by now. Yes. Um, I also just, um, had these from DK, of course, <laughs> <laughs> I sure own stock with them. Um, where is, oh. Wait, before I go there, let me show you. Okay, so DK Smith Smithsonian. Whoa, I can't speak today. Um, they have quite a bit of a collection and it goes into like further depth um, with it. This one's pretty cool. Now I know at some point everyone goes over like transportation type of history. You know, the, everybody goes over like the cars and the trains and things like that. This was really cool. This is a journey of a uh, journey, an illustrated history of travel. This is a big boy. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. But basically, you're going to go through the timeline of history through travel. So you're going to explore history itself, but the vehicle is, um, you know, how in, in what form did they travel, you know, from the cattle all the way to like, you know, the subway. Um, so I think this is also a fun way to introduce history because you're not only learning about, um, you know, the car and stuff like that, but what's going on in the world and what led to that development and that, you know, um, innovation. So, and, you know, how far they were able to travel that way or things like that. And it's obviously because it's a Smithsonian. Wow. I, that really always gets me. Um, <laughs> series is going to have some vivid, vivid photographs throughout. Yeah. So, oh, that's just gorgeous. Yeah. So this one is one that I checked out from the library probably like four times, and I finally said, "Okay, I'll order it." <laughs> uh, I have the story of food that I think is in that same series, and I did the exact same thing. I just kept renewing it, and finally decided I really should. Yeah, <laughs> when you get to like your third or fourth renewal, it's time to buy the book. Yeah, this it's just time. So um, 
then I have the series that I love. Um, this is also DK. This is a street through time. So this one is a 12,000 year walk through history. These are fairly thin. So they're um, pretty easy to go through. And there's a street through time, a city through time. There's a child through time. There's quite a bit of them. Um, so it breaks it down just like you saw with the Usborne book with each individual what's going on like here is conveniences, skilled work, clean water, remodeling, you know, it breaks down the different things of what's happening. And this is a medieval uh, town in the 1400s, um, you know, from town to city. And then you can see how a city has changed over time. That's so really I love that concept, you know. Um, if you know, you watch those time-lapse videos that you show like, you know, New York City, and it's like just grass and nothing to what it is now. So that is what these are like. So I have, this is the street and then this is a city. I also have the child's, which I didn't pull. Um, a child through time so you can follow like, you know, um, you know, kiddos, what their life were um, through history. But these are really fun and, you know, they're just snippets. Mm -hmm. So, it's good. So then I have another one because I like it when it makes it 3D. This is when on earth. Oh yeah. Um, and yes. Yeah, so especially when you're, you know, trying to tie in the geography um, element of it, just, you know, that social studies part that we try to forget about, um, <laughs> you know, we want to go ahead and do that. So here, you start from the ancient world, medieval world, modern, and um, to our current times on here. And you can see it um, through the map view. Um, so this is, again, presenting it in all kinds of different ways. I also have like timelines through times um, too, because I have a problem. <laughs> no, no, you have a passion, a passion. <laughs> Um, U.S. history is really hard to like, you know, find good ones. <laughs> it, it's, it's tough. It's, it's a little tough. Um, world history, it's a little bit easier. Um, U.S. is a little bit harder. I think this, they, they do a pretty great job. This is D.K. Smithsonian Children's Encyclopedia of American History. So this is a different take this with the encyclopedia um, take to it. So they can look up, I don't know if you can see the little margins of the time um, stamps and um, look at it as if it's a definition as well. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see the time on the side. So, um, but this one is, is ginormous as well. And it's very easy for me to like, okay, we're covering this and we can just flip over to the page and have some good information on that. What uh, what time does it go up to? Um, this one is all the way to modern history. So okay. a new millennia. Okay, so this was printed. Let me see. Let me see. It goes up to um, 2000s. So that's uh, I, there's a newer edition of this of the same book. Okay. So I'm imagining that the updated version obviously has more. Yeah, but I tend to buy my books used whenever available. So this is the one they had. <laughs> I am a, a big used book purchaser as well. Yes. Now that's all I pulled. I mean, I got more. <laughs> well, I'd love to hear a little bit about how you find books. How do you choose the titles to check out from the library or order? Um, how do you know what you want to bring in? Uh, well, I break it up into chunks. So basically, I take that big picture look of what I'm, you know, looking at a map. And let's say we're doing the Civil War, for lack of that's the first thing that popped into my mind on um, the Civil War, I want to look at people, right? First, I want to tell the story through an individual. Um, several individuals actually. So, okay, who are um, good characters to learn about? And not only the well-known, but the ones that are not, you know, the voices that have not been heard, um, you know, history told through the, you know, uh, those marginalized voices that we have not heard. So I go digging for those. Um, I also, 
I was saying this before, um, I like to collect book lists from creators that have done the work for me. <laughs> I will specifically um, buy a curricula just for the book list and have no intentions of using the curricula because I have so many, <laughs> but I want the book list. <laughs> I want the book list because they have done the work for me. And then that gives me a little bit uh, better um, you know, starting point of narrowing things down if, you know, that fits our family or, you know, if that's going to work or not, and then go from there. So I collect book lists. I stock publishers that I have been so fortunate to work with, um, and they send me review copies. I, I get to see what's coming out. <laughs> uh, so I, I, you know, I pre-plan, oh, they're going to come out with that Civil War book um, on, you know, next July or whatever it may be. So I already have plans for it. Right. <laughs> I already have plans for it. So when I look at people, I look at different stories of that. I want to study the culture um, during that time as well. I want to study the cuisine. I want to, you know, we're big in kitchen schooling. So we want to talk, uh, we want to talk about the food. We want to talk about that. So we're going to tie all those things together. So, and then my first place I go is the library. So a lot of people are under the impression because they see this big, beautiful home library behind me and they think that I just buy books and I don't. Um, <laughs> I really don't. I, I can tell you how many times a year I actually purchase books. I, my main source is the library and I, you know, I, they know me well. I have a shelf. Well, I did what before we moved. I have a shelf and it was, you know, the Arlene shelf and they already knew <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, oh, she studied something this again because I would just clean them out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I also, I'm old school. I talk to the librarian. I have them guide me. I'm like, okay, we're studying this. What do you recommend? I think that's a lost art, something that people forget about. You know, use your librarian. They're, you know, they actually went to school for that. Yeah, and they can help you. Um, so I really love picking brains like on um, that way and um, narrowing down my choices from there. But um, I also um, focus a lot on, uh, you know, our own personal history, whether it's, you know, um, Black, Hispanic, uh, you know, uh, we're Jewish as well. And I want to know about what was happening with our own culture in during that time, because, you know, uh, there's a lot that we don't know that is not, you didn't learn in school. Like, I, I was like, okay, during the segregation, what happened to Hispanics? I wanted to know that, like, you know, to me, it was like something maybe somebody else wouldn't have thought about. I'm like, has anybody written about what happened to his family? So I went down a rabbit hole, <laughs> you know, and went from there. Any good books? I'm on, sorry. Did you find any good books on that topic? I did. Um, and I would have to get back to you because um, I got them from the library. I didn't purchase it, but there was, um, uh, there was a picture books and um, it was a setting um, in California, uh, you know, um, I'm trying to remember, it's been a while, um, of what happened there and um, how there were schools just for um, Mexicans. And there was like, you know, and it was, it was the same, but it took me so long to find information on that. I'm like, okay. And then I found the connection. If you look at the census, it will say white Hispanic or white non-Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Then that's why I felt um, down that rabbit trail. I'm like, okay, so were they considered white or were they considered black? You know, like were they segregated the same? So I went off on the tangent. But <laughs> no, that's fascinating. And, you know, certainly something we're always working on is wanting to tell more of those stories. And there are always more stories to tell because, um, you know, we've had one point of view for so long. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I'm like, you know, what I aim for, you see all these beautiful books that are being shared all the time, which are great. I don't see anything wrong with it. But I'm my, uh, in our home, we're going to have a different focus. You know, we want to tell the stories that have not been told. That's really fantastic. Um, so it's definitely something you're looking for in books. So aside from, um, you know, featuring diverse or marginalized voices, what else are you looking for when you're choosing books to share with your kids? Um, I not only like the diversity is the way that the history is presented. Now, obviously, uh, I'm going to have the, their developmental age in mind of what they can take in. And, uh, and just because a particular book uh, sh shares something that maybe they're not so ready to digest, 
doesn't mean that I will skip it because I can easily just, you know, brush over certain parts or, or reword it in a way that's more digest, um, digestible for them. My kiddos are also autistic. Um, so I keep that also in mind that, um, my daughter may be almost 11, but developmentally she's not almost 11. Um, so I take all those things into consideration of their emotional state of where they're at and what they can digest. But I also, uh, I'm not going to paint flowers and rosy things, but I think a balance is important. Um, yes, history can be ugly and awful and stuff, but there's also beauty that happened. There's also um, a lot of beautiful things that came out of ugly, you know, um, things that that um, were born out of hardship, out of trauma and things like that. So I think it's important to present the bad and the ugly and the beauty at the same time. Like it's not all rainbows, but it's also not all horrible. <laughs> You know, um, I think there's there's a balance and I know like saying that it's maybe an unpopular opinion, but I think there's a balance and we need to keep, you know, our kiddos heart in mind as well, you know, what they can digest, um, especially for, like I said, my family being Jewish, um, they've learned about the Holocaust way much earlier than probably a typical um, student that doesn't have that relationship. Um, that that's not part of their own family culture. Um, but my kiddos learned about it and due to, um, you know, current events and things like that, they had to learn some harsh truth at a very, very early age. So I take a lot of consideration of where my kiddos are, what they can digest, but at the same time, not feeding them a lie, mm -hmm. but being mindful of how I'm presenting the, um, the information. So maybe, um, at an earlier age, they learned about the Holocaust and it was more about, you know, there was a bad man and he did not um, allow Jewish people to do this, this and that. And, you know, uh, something horrible happened. The next year you go into a little bit more detail. The next year after that, you have more details. And I, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like in bite size, I didn't lie at the beginning. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But it was what they presently could digest. Mm -hmm. And so you're, are you looking at books that hit sort of at these different levels? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. like a different levels of basically what um, I was, it hits at, you know, it's presented in a way that leaves you that window. Mm -hmm. Now they may give you more than you're ready to say, um, but it gives me that window. It gives me that avenue to go deeper or to just stay right here, <laughs> yeah. you know, and go there. Now, my kiddos are very inquisitive and they're very like, you know, um, socially aware and um, history is really big here. So they have been able to digest a lot more than some other kiddos, mm -hmm. you know, some other families be like, they know about what, <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> and it's, it's different because it uh, affects them personally. You know, I'm raising, you know, my kids kiddos are mixed so it's a little bit different for them yeah so thank you so much for sharing those insights and philosophies i think that there are a lot of really important conversations to be had and thank you for sharing all of those books like i said i'm gonna have to go through this recording with a <laughs> pencil and paper and write down all the things that i'll be uh trying to order from our bookstore and um before we started this video, Arlene and I were talking about supporting indie bookstores. So if uh, anyone sees books that they want to purchase, definitely check out your local indie stores or um, bookshop.org is a great place to order from indie bookstores um, and used bookstores and your library. These are all great resources. Arlene, thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking to me. And, thank you. Uh, and can you share where we can find you um, on the internet? I am in a lot of places. <laughs> um, you can find me on Instagram is my main hangout, which is Arlene and Company. Um, I'm also on Facebook at Arlene and Company. Um, I'm also on Pinterest, though I forget that I have Pinterest at Arlene and Company. <laughs> um, I'm not on YouTube. People keep asking me all the time. I just, I, I, you know, I have to stop somewhere. No yep. TikTok or how I call it tickety talk. I'm not there. <laughs> um, but I do also have a group uh, with my fellow book nerd, um, Kelly from Homeschool by the Beach. 
Uh, we have a group called the Bookner Cafe. We also have an Instagram page called the Bookner Cafe. And um, that's uh, the dot Bookner Cafe. And um, we just share books there. Nothing else but books. <laughs> and we have like a monthly um, book club and we have a monthly uh, reading recommendation challenge instead of a reading challenge because we're homeschool moms and you know dads or caregivers. Uh, we know you're busy. So instead of saying, here's a reading challenge, we do reading recommendation challenge where we have a daily prompt and you just give us recommendation based on those prompts. And then we have little prizes at the end for people that participate. So it's our little, our little hole in the, um, in the internet, which we absolutely adore. So come join us if you like. It's an awesome resource. Um, I'm very thankful for it. All right. Well, thank you very much.